All right, so we just finished modeling our kinetic reactor. Next, I want to model a batch reactor, which is a vessel reactor in, in KempCAD. Now, the, the one difference, so we're going to have a different um, reaction that we're going to look at here, and that's because in our vessel reactor, we're going to be limited to a liquid phase reaction. Okay, and so with the gas phase reaction that we had before, um, we, we couldn't model in, in a vessel. So we're going to model a, a batch reactor. It's going to be a vessel reactor in, in KempCAD. And it's going to be similar to a kinetic reactor and then we're going to have to define um, a rate expression. Okay, kind of comment one. Um, comment two is it, it's going to run a little differently in that before everything we were doing, we were performing these steady state simulations. Um, but here we're going to have a, a dynamic simulation. The problem we're going to look at is, is going to be pretty simple. Then we'll just have initial charge at time equals zero and we'll just let our system evolve with respect to time. Uh, but do know if you had anything more complicated, if you're doing something like solvent switching, right? You can have some inlet stream, and you can control, you can schedule, you know, when that stream is on or off, and then you could also have, you know, some continuous product uh, stream that you're pulling as as well. So you you can make these things very complicated, um, but we'll we're going to keep it simple here at least initially. Okay. And so I had my my flow sheet open from last time, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this and I'm going to start new. So I'm going to, so yeah, I'll, I'll save what we had before. Okay. okay, so I'm going to start by playing with my engineering units. So when I specify my engineering units, right, I'm not looking at my rate expression. Again, we can change those within our reactor. So instead I'm looking and we're going to have, we have kilomoles, We've got a molar concentration, but then we give amounts in kilomoles, so kilomoles uh, Celsius bar, okay, and then time minutes. So we have kilomoles, oh, so let me, I always just go to common SI, so time, I'm going to change the minutes, kilomoles Celsius bar, good. Okay. Now I'm going to select my components. And so we have the saponification of ethyl acetate with sodium hydroxide to produce sodium acetate and ethanol. So we'll need ethyl acetate. Ethyl acetate. Sodium hydroxide. sodium hydroxide, sodium acetate, and ethanol. Okay, so let's add all of those. Um, now in thermodynamic model, it will go, oh, actually, let me cancel that because I need to add one more component. Okay, I need to add water, right? Because we have an aqueous solution of ethyl acetate and sodium hydroxide. So I need to add water. And that's going to become important because now that I have water, okay, when it goes to select a thermodynamic model, it's going to select an electrolyte model. Um, because, you know, my sodium hydroxide, for example, is going to dissociate to form uh, Na and, and OH ions. And, and so that will be important. So I'm going to click OK. okay. There's some missing groups, and that's OK. Ah. Did I do everything right? Ethyl acetate, sodium hydroxide, sodium acetate, ethanol, water. Yes. So it should Okay, I'm gonna it just went to thermophysical. It, it before I, I swear when I did it before it just automatically went through the prompt of an electrolyte model, but but it didn't. So under thermophysical initialize, it'll identify all of the ionic uh, species in, in my system. I'll click OK. And then 
you know, it'll, it'll make recommendations for, it's going to have three reactions. It's going to re recommend using this, you know, ENRTL model. Okay. Uh, reaction one is going to be the dissociation of water, and then I have my equilibrium constant for that. Reaction two is going to be the dissociation of NaOH to Na plus and OH minus. So there's blanks here for my equilibrium uh, model. But that's because NaOH is going to dissociate completely to form uh, sodium and hydroxide ions. And then I have uh, equilibrium between sodium acetate and it's going to dissociate to form sodium ions and acetate ions All right, with that equilibrium constant. Cool. Now, before, I swear when I entered my thermodynamic um, settings, it, it did that automatically, but, but that's okay. All right, so now my vessel reactor. So I'm just going to drag in my vessel reactor. Okay, and our simulation, we're only going to have some initial charge at time equals zero, and then we're going to let our system evolve with time. So I don't need to add uh, any feed streams or product streams. And so I'm going to double click on the reactor. Okay. And we're going to start with having to specify the reactor charge. So this is your reactor at time equals zero. Okay. So at time equals zero, okay, we're initially at 25 degrees C in one bar. Okay. And then at time equals zero, uh, we have a 100 kilomole aqueous solution of ethyl acetate and sodium hydroxide at a concentration of 0.1 molar which I say is approximately 96 kilomoles water, 2 kilomoles ethyl acetate, and 2 kilomoles sodium hydroxide. Okay, so let's get this. 96 kilomoles of water, 2 kilomoles ethyl acetate, and 2 kilomoles sodium hydroxide. Okay, I flash that, and I am ready to go. So then it's going to take me to the next window, right? It's going to take me through um, the series of information that it needs. Okay, so next, reaction. So just like before, we have a single reaction. It's going to be a liquid phase only, right? So it does have mixed phase, but the reaction is still going to take place in the liquid. Okay, so it's, we're going to be liquid only. Standard rate expression, so just like our kinetic model. And I think we said well, let's, we're going to specify that it's going to run isothermally uh, at 25 degrees C. So we're going to assume that it runs isothermally, okay, at 25 degrees C. Um, and then pressure is constant, right? And so um, it's going to be a liquid phase reaction. I won't specify it, but we'll, so we'll just we'll just leave it. But it's going to change, or it's going to be constant, essentially one bar. I have a liquid phase reaction. Okay. Um, but then you'll see, right? We have you could define semi batch. Um, so you can you can get fancy here. All right. So now in terms of stoichiometry, use mole basis for stoichiometry, stoichiometry and rate expression, and then this is where we can define our units again. So in terms of uh, stoichiometry and, and rate expression, right? We could use moles or, or kilomoles would would be the same, but I'll use uh, moles, right? My rate expression is using moles, which would be a gram mole. Time unit. Okay. So again. I have liters mole second. So time unit, liters mole second, time unit, second, volume unit, liters, and then activation energy. Um, we don't have um, an activation energy, so it, it doesn't matter. But I'm just going to make it kilojoules just because that's what, what it would normally do. Um, specifying a reference temperature for the heat of reaction. I'm just going to specify 25 degrees C, which is our feed temperature, and, and then we're running isothermally. Okay. All right, so I'll define my rate expression just like I did before. So frequency factor, that's my pre-exponential term. So it's going to be 0 0.104, right? The units right, are good. Units are determined by my rate expression. And then I specified the units on that last prompt. So it'll just be 0 0.104. I won't specify an activation energy since we're not given one. But then I need to define my kinetics. So we have sodium hydroxide, um, or sodium hydroxide and ethyl acetate are my reactants. Sodium hydroxide and ethyl acetate. 
Those both have stoichiometric coefficients of negative 1. And then it's going to form um, ethanol and then sodium acetate. So ethanol and sodium acetate. And both have a stoichiometric coefficient of 1. Okay. Water is not included because water doesn't participate in the reactant, reaction. Essentially, it's just going to serve as a, as a big thermal bath um, since I have this you know, one-to-one -one, uh, reaction. Okay. Next screen is, so what's going to happen is we're going to run this dynamic simulation. It'll be similar to a sensitivity study in that we'll let this evolve for some period of time. Here, Kempcad's asking what information we want to track as a function of time. Okay, so I'm going to look at um, composition, and so I'm going to look at moles since we specify things in terms of kilomoles, and I'm going to specify just ethyl acetate and then sodium acetate. I could put all four of my components on there. The issue is I have the same number of uh, moles of ethyl acetate and sodium hydroxide going in. And they both have the same stoichiometric coefficient, okay? And so their concentrations are going to be right on top of each other. And then sodium acetate and ethanol, okay, both have the same stoichiometric coefficient, so they're going to have the same concentration throughout. So if I specify all four, they're they're just on top of each other. Okay. Um, I'm going to display in terms of units. I'm going to make this minutes, since we're told we're going to. Well, we can make it minutes or hours. It it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, well, let, let's keep it minutes. We're going to run for 30 minutes. Um, and then if you want to specify anything else, right, you, you could do that. Like the, the temperature, well, the temperature is constant, but if you wanted the heat duty, um, you could specify, you know, all of that. All right, so with the batch reactor, right, that heat duty is going to be uh, sensitive to, to time as well because uh, your rate of reaction is going to change with respect to time. All right, so then brings me to this menu where if I want to go in and change any of those settings, I can. Okay, but I'm going to exit out for now. Okay, okay. The warning was just about the electrolyte model, but we'll leave it. Okay. So now, before right, we had the steady state simulation. Now that's grayed out, and now we have a dynamic simulation. So before I can run my dynamic simulation, I'm going to need to click here to set the runtime. Okay, so number of operational steps. This would be, um, you know, if I wanted to, you know, add some feed over some give, given period of time, then cut it off, or you know, so if I had any sort of like, operational steps, right, I I could define those. Okay, but in our case, we're just going to run for three minutes and plot the concentration with respect to time. Right, then if it works, it says, hey, try 30 minutes. Right, but we're just going to charge this at time equals zero and let it evolve. So we're just going to have a single operational step. Okay. And then in terms of that step, we're going to define the runtime. So the time we want to run for is three minutes. And then step size, and again, this is going to be similar to our sensitivity study in that it'll run for you know some short period of time, record the value, then run for another short period of time, and keep repeating until it gets that final time of three minutes. So I'll make a runtime of, say, 0 0.01 minutes. right? And so if I click OK, and then run now, I'm going to run from my initial state at time equals 0. Okay, Just tells me about my electrolyte model again. And bam, right, I get concentration as a function of time, right, and it's going to go out to 3 minutes. Okay. You know, not too interesting, it's, it's almost at completion here at 3 minutes. Right, and if I wanted to see what I had earlier, right, I could go back and, and scroll back. Okay. Cool. If I wanted to run for 30 minutes, I could do a couple of things. Right, One, I could reset to my initial time. This would take me back to time equals zero. Okay. And if I do that, then I can just set my run time and I could update this to, to 30. Right. And, you know, that's cool. The other thing you could have done is we could have just, well, see, that was much quicker since it just had 10 data points. Um, but the other thing we could have played with is just 
um, continuing from, from where we left off. Okay. But there's the basic of my, my batch reactor. Again, if I wanted to change any settings, I just double click on it. I go to the relevant screen. So if I want to change my uh, rate equation units, I click and I could change. Okay. Um, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's it. Hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions.